heavy bombardment, crater discarpment, catastrophic impact, core to crust cracked, swift revolution, eject a solution, miniature satellite, the moon in flight, golden solar light, albedo by night. The fourth stand. Day more hours fades, years get fewer days, bar constellations, star tessellations, magnetosphere around, atmosphere abound, magma's inner core, lava's crustal floor, meteorites, water from heights, water vapor rain, roiling seas rhyme, axial tilt with seasons built, equator to poles, Coriolis rolls, light struck gases, Aurora passes, electrical arc, thunderclap, hark! <laughs> Dry land rises free, separates earth and sea, tectonic stride, chronic slide, mid ocean spread, volcanic seabed, mountain range lift, sediment shift. Land bound in ice, pressure like vice. Glaciation end, sun ministration send. 365, billionth sun dive. Current of wind and wave, ocean vent and tidal cave. Carbon, oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, life. Six stands. RNA, helical DNA, archaea and bacteria, membrane voluntary, prokaryotic, eukaryotic, eukaryotic, internally complex, membrane flex, community gel, colonial cell, homostasis, basis. ATP prevailed. Entropy circumvent. Osmotic pressure. H2O pressure. Pentocytosis. Phagocytosis. Drink water in. Eat small. Fishhag mastered. Oh, uh, that's the ninth stand. Oh, I'm Seven. sorry. Okay, sorry. New evolution, sexual solution, dual chromosome, unravel histone, daughter from parent, base pairs errant, replication error, uniqueness bearer, a continuity into infinity, all life related, all life equated until extirpated, progress negated. Predator eat prey, defenses do pay. Symbionics live, mutually give. Closely entwined, two, now one kind. Photosynthesis, a cell wall thesis, animal motility, cephalic motility, tube with a tube, the distant improve, not to cold short backbone, open jaws to own, builds mean meant for ocean lungs or a new ocean, lengthen limb on land. Strengthened body and hand, toughened skin to air against the wind. I'll read the ninth stanza. 
fish egg mastered, amphibium plastered, leather shelled, reptile egg held, seropsids fall, therapsids ball, placental viviparity, parental charity, middle ear bone, jaw hinge grown, mammals sweat milk, hair like silk, large neocortex, consciousness vortex, primate tree abode, ape savanna stroke, bipedal hominids, novel stone cuspids, man such as we are, bones of a star. And so there is three more stanzas in the next poem. Would we like to read them or would we like to do discussion now? I think we should go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Yes. We are a part of the whole. And so who would like to read the tenth stanza? Hunter-gatherer, language blatherer, tribes migrate, intercalate, adapting technology, forming mythologies, dancing, painting, and song to keep peacefulness strong. Fear will find strange, war brings hard change, gradually finding grain for the grinding, livestock to tend, Fences to mend, industrial drive, consumption arrive, sedentary trend, market ways to bend, trusting education for eventual salvation. And who would like to read the 11th Life sought, science brought. We idolized tech, computers to spec. But at a price, we rolled the dice. Globalized cash, itemized cash, crash. Ecology plunder, capital plunder. Stupefy the masses, inequity surpasses. Wealth born on the back, those who now lack. Destruction wrought, target, overshot. Greenhouse gases, underpaid classes, extinction, eminent reaction, ambivalent. Truth singer, bell ringer, sentry shake up, gently wake up, conflict mediate, hope demonstrate, decisions to make, culture quake, community spirit, sovereignty, cheer it, earthly well being. Compassion freeing, sanctify feeling, signify healing, remember to give to all who live. Occupy your uprising, be surprising. Activism is doable, life is renewable.
just a thing that I am longing for. I think that a lot of people who study the natural world, whether they be naturalists or whether they be scientists or some combination thereof, I feel like they also are craving the same sort of thing that I'm craving. I'm just a student. I only have two years post-secondary in this in these types of sciences. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are uh, PhDs. They have spent so much of their life studying something, and they may know everything there is to know about that something. And it is incredible that we get to add our knowledge to one another. And I am just, I am just blown away that we get to be each other's prophets and, and share with each other what we know about the universe that maybe someone else has never discovered yet. Well, I, I think um, we're all students. We're all students. We all need to learn. Even here in our circle where we are so open talking about various things, it's all, we're all still learning. That's why I like your talk. <laughs> I think that you have done a stunning, wonderful job of, of bringing the intricacies of scientific language in an absolutely consistent and, and real way from beginning to end of your whole poem. Yeah. It was, it was, um, you, you found all of the words mm -hmm. from the origin of the various notions of how we came to be and have woven them uh, in rhyme. I, I, <laughs> I honor <laughs> what you have done here. <laughs> Thank you. It was very enriching. Brought to mind uh, the uh, visit we did at the Rose Planetarium <coughs> many years ago in New York City, <coughs> which is a gigantic room, I guess you would call it, or an exposition, and you start on like the second, third level, and you go around and around and around, and uh, through all the galaxies and from the Big Bang Theory and all the creation, as you mentioned, the first nine stanzas, and then you get down to the human level, and in comparison, there's one hair length of how human existence has been <laughs> in this whole, and I think you captured that beautifully with your your nine stanzas and then three small ones <laughs> for, for what we have for that little hair. That we part have. of the reason that I appreciated and decided to use my brother's suggestion on splitting them up into two poems was that I really, it did tickle my fancy that if I, I leave it as two different poems, humans are only the very last line in the last stanza of the first poem. Man such as we are, bones of a star. It seems good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was I was just delighted because I I get very excited about scientific things as well. And I, I wrote a little story about eukaryotes and prokaryotes so, and I named them while you eukaryotes, which I thought was fun. <laughs> <laughs> because that was the big transition. Big, between breathing oxygen and breathing, you know, and the, these, well, anyway, I don't need to go into that. <laughs> but it was, you know, such an exciting, transformative moment that I had, I, had, I wrote a small story about which And the other thing is about looking to something scientific is, for me, the human body is the most amazing Thing. And if I want to do something relaxing, I'll look at an anatomy book. And look at the muscles again. Look at the nerves. And look at the blood, you know, circulatory system. And, you know, you look at this part of the brain, and it's just to me that's just incredible beauty and, and amazing. It just amazes me all the time. And the fact that so much of it, it all works without us saying, 
do this or do that. I I would, I'm, that was really super incredible because it for me that was like a great summary of our modern creation myth mm. and uh, it brought it all together and it simplified it and I think well that's great because that would be like that poem is like a great teaching device too for for kids and, and for adults because it does simplify all of the, those all those terms that I heard in that those are the terms that help us to understand reference points for a modern creation myth it's, it's a really cool summary. I really liked it. Well, I, would, I wouldn't say to, to, to what you were saying. I wouldn't say that only the humans are incredible. The animals, down to the tiny little ant, it's amazing. And my cat, how, how she knows what's happening outside there, <laughs> and I have no idea. And all that sort of thing is just incredible. How does it all happen? Where does it all come from? That's what I wanted you to tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's an inside job, eh? That's right. I don't feel a need to believe in something supernatural or deities or something out there because we keep finding incredibly deeper and deeper levels of what's in here. The matter and the energy and the ways that it it builds this emerging complex set of properties that it didn't have before, like life, like consciousness. It's, it's remarkable. And for all of it to have started so simply and then to add and add and add, and for life to have possibly come out of, of uh, self-building proteins or possibly RNA and then build and become cells and then the cells to eat one another but not digest one another, and all of a sudden we have uh, cells with organelles, we have the eukaryotes, like, <coughs> the life is built upon itself. <coughs> and now, as we sit here, we are trillions of cooperating cells with trillions of non-human cells mm. making us tick. I mm. think billions, it's, actually. It's, 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 it's like 100 trillion, according to Bruce Lipton, 100, 100 to 200 trillion. But a, is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine out of every ten, though, are, are like actually uh, fungus and bacteria. Well, it's Somebody bacteria. else. They're non-human. <laughs> right. non -human. So it is our modern scientific origin story, but we don't tend to treat it as a spiritual, religious idea. And I think that it is. Now, of course, if it was. If science was going to be a proper religion, it would require a lot of extra pieces. We'd have to, as a group, sit down and talk about, you know, what are our, our ethics, our code of conduct? Mm. How do we have a, a contemplative practice? What are our, our rituals and our ceremonies to mark what we believe is sacred? There would have to be a lot of extra pieces. But I think it is our origin story. It is our worldview. We just don't treat it as sacred. And I think that's a disconnect that I've always been hungry to, to fill and have bridged. And so this, this was my attempt to do some bridging for myself. It was so brilliant. I really enjoyed your presentation. And my special uh, attitude about it is, as a scientist, is trying to understand spirituality. And it's just like that's so big of a project and it's we're just at baby steps in that now but it would seem like in the future it will all become clearer and hopefully it will evolve there is yeah. so many different religions and some of them quite large religions with billions of people that believe in them and there is a lot of value. There is a lot of, I think, social and psychological value that we get. And it's interesting why those practices trigger positive responses in us. And maybe studying them to learn how, for instance, scientific knowledge could trigger some of those responses in us. Um, like for me, a candle. I have a lot of association spiritually with candles and, and light and warmth and, and 
meaning of a soul or the, the light within, light of knowledge. There's many associations, but for me personally, the deepest one is we are in our body's metabolism, we are a slow burn. We are, our cellular respiration is taking sugar and burning it and producing, or using oxygen to burn it and producing carbon dioxide. We are fire, control. That candle is the same process that's happening within me. It's just less controlled, yet less, the energy is less utilized. But when I light a candle, I think of the flame burning in me. Mm -hmm. I think of the, the metabolism happening that's allowing my body to, to continue functioning. Mm -hmm. And so it, taking, taking ideas from religions and spiritual traditions and saying, how does that speak to me? Mm -hmm. How does that trigger a sense, of, a sense of awe and wonder and community? And how does that make me feel good? that song, that dance, that ritual, that practice, that, that thing that we say together when we come together to talk about what is sacred. How can we trigger that when we're talking about science or even other mundane issues in our daily life? So. Yeah, I think I understand now what you were saying. <laughs> you're looking at a completely uh, physical and uh, scientific view, and that's great, yes. And I think all those various religions, they are trying to find the purpose behind it, and where it all comes from. I mean, it's fine and dandy, we have people sitting here physical, physically, but where, where does it come from? What is it? What's all these religions? Are? To me, they're all looking, <coughs> looking for something. Maybe. That's what I, I get from listening to you. <laughs> I think we all are looking for these same sort of answers, the same yeah. sort of questions about where do we come from, why are we here, what's our meaning. Science yeah. gives us a whole backstory, which is incredibly detailed, on what those answers look like. But I think we would have to decide for ourselves, because we would be the meaning makers of the universe the tiny little fragments of the universe looking back at itself. We are the meaning makers, and so we would have to decide what's it good for? Well, maybe what's it good for is life. Maybe the purpose of the universe was to bring out life. I, I don't know, but it gives us another way to access those age-old questions. Uh, all these uh, religions are... Uh, thinking of them as like different lenses that we can put on and see from different points of view. And they're all valid. And they're all trying to get us to see the God within it or the awe, what's behind it, the, all these stories. So I, I think of each religion as kind of like a different lens of reality. And I can see how alchemy can, for some people, bridge the science and spirituality. It's absolutely incredible, all these different creation myths and how they can answer each individual a different story that's compatible with them. But to me then, I don't know if I said that before, but to me then religions is that we are always searching, searching for the meaning. And uh, yeah, basically, searching for the meaning while we're here. And science.